I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. And today, this is going to be a fantastic show. We've got Rob, and we've got Richard from Box Wallet. How's it going, guys? Good. Yeah, good. good happy, to, happy to talk to Richard, finally. <laughs> I'm excited to talk to Richard. He's been working on some really cool stuff that's coming up, and I think he'll be excited to talk about it. And, uh, of course, we can also talk about... Um, we're going to talk about the past, the present, and what's coming up that's exciting for the entire community from Box Wallet. Rob, you've been using Box Wallet for a while, right? I have actually. I was there when uh, I was there in the our development group when Richard came in and and joined the fun. Uh, I I had made a a thing that was um, making using Divi at the command line easier for me. And then he came in with this amazing tool that was way better. <laughs> so I ended up using that. Um, and Richard, tell, tell us about how, how you guys started. I, I, I remember something like you were using it to learn Go in the same way I was using my thing to learn Python. Or yeah. that's how I remember uh, it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that was it. I, I find whenever I learn a program and language, it's, it's, uh, it's good. It's a good challenge to try and write a useful product. Um, so I just started learning Go and started to get a feel for it. Um, had a few boxes lying around running Linux. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if I can make things a bit easier. So just started kicking the tires and, um, yeah, coding small bits at a time um, and got massive amount of help from the development group, which was good because I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, it got lots of encouragement and just gradually started to make it better, really. What uh what's your like what kind of background do you have in order to like even feel confident of building something like that? Um well, I wouldn't say I felt confident in building it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was um I've been in IT most of my life. Um and I was a software engineer for a bit, then went back to IT and then I'm sort of like going more into sort of DevOps side of things and back into software engineering again. So um, I'd been running Linux for the best part of 25 years, actually, um, maybe more than that. Um, and uh, yeah, just, I just, a lot of it, I don't really think how long and how big it's going to get. I just start coding and just take step by step, really. Yeah. Um, so you had a lot of background in Linux, but none in Go, the programming language you used, and none in Divi in particular. Did you have any blockchain at that point, or was that also a learned thing at the time? Yeah, no, not really. No, I I, I knew the concept of how blockchain worked, but, um, and I still really don't mind, don't know much more than that <laughs> now, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but fortunately, I don't have to, because right. uh, Box Wallet just talks to the um the the divi daemon for example um via its rpc so all i do is i just talk talk to that and respond to its reactions and just try and make things a bit easier um yeah it was nice. it was like 2020 i think is uh when you and i started talking because you joined the divi development community right isn't that that how it got started was hey i'd like to build things and uh you had used, I think at the time it was TipBot and maybe even looked at Rob's tool uh, originally. And that's where you got your Go idea, right? Isn't that how it all got started? Um, I can't remember. I, I, it was a while back um, because I just started um, a DevOps position at work. And I needed, right, to, yeah. um, I needed to learn Go to help with that. Um, and yeah, so I just... I just I've had I had an attempt to write well not a tip but I wrote a uh, other tool to, um for for telegram um, bots um <laughs> so yeah but it's it's um yes yeah, mainly box wallet that got in there but it, it's good because when people started using it they said oh it'd be good if it did this and it'd be good if it did that which gave you me a direction as well I yeah. remember yeah. that I remember the having the conversation because Remember they had the the um, smart node, right? That you know, was what it was called, the Raspberry Pi smart node. And that had some updates to it that put it outside the willingness of the volunteers and 
I think Nick helped out on it and uh, another community member helped out on building that. And then it kind of faded out. I didn't have time to help. And I tried to help a couple of people. And then you started building this. This actually ends up being a much more advanced replacement for those people who want to do something on their own and use, I mean, you can use it on a full-blown machine, uh, but you can use it on your Raspberry Pis. You can use it on your single board computers and you can have a sort of standalone node that's validating the blocks, essentially staking there for you. So it, it replaces what was originally available and called the smart node. But I would say this is the smarter node <laughs> because this tool does almost everything you would want it to do from a full desktop version. It is still a little bit more command line. And maybe you could talk to us about some of the future things that are coming up with, but it, it really allows a user to just have complete peace of mind, use their regular computer for all their regular stuff use their use their uh, uh, box wallet on anything else that they have and uh, they could even look at it from their television if they plugged it into their HDMI port or something like that I mean they can really do a lot of things with it yeah I think one of the things that made it easier in go because I I wasn't building specifically for the pie at all when I started um it was just um it was the fact that in go i could compile on the binary form for the machine that i wanted to so in english it's like i was writing for i think it was a linux laptop or a headless linux laptop to start with mm -hmm. um and i just thought oh i wonder if i can compile this for the pi and then realized that it was just a, a single command to do it and it's like oh that's cool that works as well so yeah um and then i had somebody else that needed a 32-bit binary because they were still running a 32-bit Linux and I was able to to spit one of those out as well so from that point of view it makes it much easier because you don't have to think about more than one code base you could just just focus on the one that's so cool that's so cool what's uh you've been doing something new with box wallet too as I recall you're working with a different tool or di not a different is it a different language spelt yeah so one of the things that um sort of my stages through the software learning software was is i wanted i got interested in web development and i thought to myself perhaps what i could do is create a essentially a web a web server that would run locally that would allow any browser to um to access it so i've effectively called it box wallet 2 although that's a pretty rubbish name um but very creative <laughs> I don't, thank you um that's about as creative as, as i get unfortunately um but yeah so what that that's written that was a whole different stack so that is written in basically in, in typescript so it, it uses it's got a javascript front end called svelte svelte Gear, um and it uses node effectively as a back end um and when it's set up it's really good because it means that you can just pick your mobile up um, go to your web browser tab and see that you're staking very easily um, and just all control it by your phone the problem is is it's more complicated to set up than a single cli tool and wow. so i am working out how best to do it because what i don't want to do is make it more complicated because i i know that know that users want easy and they want it to be reproducible um and the node setup is a little bit cumbersome so i'm currently working out the best way of effectively having a box wallet helper that you'll be able to run and it will automatically detect what you've got installed and what is needed um and hopefully make it easy to set it up so are you essentially saying that if I'm at home and I've got my box wallet running on some other machine, whatever it may be, um, I can pull up the web browser on my computer and I can go to, let's just say, uh, an IP address or something, and I can pull it up and I can see what's happening, or I could even do that on my phone. I could see everything that's happening directly yeah. from any machine on my network. 
Yes. So the That's way. So cool. Yeah. So it, it's a it, it's effectively at the moment it's a completely separate version. So it's actually nothing to do with the CLI uh, tool at all. Um, wow. Which is one of the reasons I call it Box Wallet too. But it's yeah, I'm still selling on that. Um, <laughs> so so yeah. So you don't have to have you don't have to have Box Wallet or CLI tool installed at all. You can go now to the GitHub and clone the repository, which is effectively a node app. Um, and providing that you've got um, either Node installed on your machine or um, Bun, which is a, a Node alternative, then you can use one of those two um, as a web server, which effectively runs the UI part. Cool. Was now you've uh, you've been cheating on us a little bit, right? This box wallet for other coins, <laughs> Is that, or am I wrong? <laughs> no, it does it does support. Um, yeah, it does support a few more. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and they they are also lightweight, like Divi are. Yeah, um, I I find I find a lot of them, especially with because uh, when I first started, it was using I think Divi to the um cli backend um mm -hmm. which was a little bit heavier especially on the older pies you had to give it quite a bit of flexibility and swap to get running but um the new version um the, the version three uh seems to be yeah seems to be very efficient nice, nice. yeah that's um, thanks to random string lightweight 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 random yeah. string is his middle name <laughs> Uh, so that's uh, so that's pretty cool. So now, are you getting uh, you get support from the other communities also um, in terms of being able to uh, or, or enthusiasm about access for their coins on inside Box Wallet also? Yes, uh, but but nowhere near as much as I got from from um, from our development chat. Uh, random nice. string was uh he was really really good i don't in fact if it wasn't for him i probably wouldn't have been able to get off the ground because That's i was beautiful. asking a load of dumb questions um <laughs> that i really didn't know the answer to and each time he was responding to me you know cool. generously giving me his time the penny was dropping that a little bit a little bit more and it's like oh right so now i could do it this way and obviously yourself and voice have all been encouraging me as well so it's been it's been great Awesome. Um, was most of that, like, I'm trying to get at, like, how easy is it for anyone to kind of build something that sits either on top of Divi or supports Divi, uh, a Divi node in some way? Like, so you had a, you had a, you had a pretty extensive Linux background, not so much programming. Um, you got a lot of help. What do you think, like, what do you think is the barriers for people who, who, have little or nothing in terms of experience uh but can get on board have an idea of what they want to build and and being able to build it what do you think is the biggest challenges are there i think um i think the rpc side of things so i think a lot of people don't realize that the divi demon is effectively sat there and waiting for requests mm -hmm. um and those requests are quite standard from from other coins as well so um they all differ a little bit but things like um you know get network info um get status get wallet info it's just standard rest requests that get json responses and that makes it very easy for any developer in any language really mm -hmm. to actually um to communicate that now, what you said to um, me was extremely clear. However, I'm putting my other non-programmer hat on. We used REST, RP, R, RPC, uh, CLI. We should probably, Jason, uh, we should probably uh, go down into what each of those things are before we continue too much further. Um, otherwise, it's it, it, may, it may be a little yeah. bit difficult to follow. So um, let's start with the CLI. So that's the command line interface. Um, and how do people see the, the CLI? so on linux you can it's it's quite easy to describe on linux because i pretty much use it every day but so traditionally where computers came from for dos um back in the day if i'm 
the term my age now uh, yeah, mine too. windows <laughs> windows was running on top of dos which in english means when the computer was turned on it gave you the, the black command prompt and then you type windows and it would turn into ui um and linux is very much like that as well so if you've got i suppose the most common way of of a of a non techie user or a non geek user to be using it would be on a pi um there will be a button that just you can click on that effectively gives you a black background with a white flashing cursor um where you can enter the commands yeah cool so that's the cli and the cli interface oh that's redundant like the atm machine isn't it uh so the the command line interface uh for divi is a set of commands that uh you use at, at on the interface that you talked about with the cursor to talk to the divi demon and that's what your programs are doing basically launching those command those same commands right um sort of yes so the the um yeah so the divi demon itself is the main one that i actually need to run because that is effectively it's almost effectively a web server in itself and it's sat there waiting for requests and i would understand i haven't looked at the ui the desktop wallet but i would guess that the desktop wallet does exactly the same thing so when the user is clicking on different buttons what it's doing is sending uh, under the hood if you like requests in the same fashion to the right. to the demon which yeah, is that's exactly responding. what it's doing yeah yeah because uh in, in the console you can actually see a cli in there also on the yeah. on the desktop wallet um and let's yes. do rpc which i actually forgot what it stands for r is remote i think yeah it's remote procedure call um there you go. Mm -hmm. so it's but it's it's basically a very standard text specs text based way of communicating with the demon so there is a very simple command called curl in linux and this is how i actually started out so i would effectively throw a very simple text request at the daemon um like for example get status or get info and then it would return a text-based response in a form of json uh, which is uh, like a javascript text object um it's much easier to show it rather than because yeah. a lot of people would have seen it and go oh i know yeah. what that is yeah so json then, is like a format kind of yes yeah. it's yeah. that's right and then once you've got that that textual object you can then decode that and present that to the user in a way that that the interface you're building allows cool did i did we leave one out another acronym i think we got them all <laughs> anyway I think, so, well you nerded out for me so you know yeah well if anybody you know, needs a concierge call after this so just let me know sorry just it was just it's just we're using a lot of acronyms and then it's like <laughs> what does that mean so I thought it was worthwhile to kind of dive down a little bit into that so we can continue not mm -hmm. worrying about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so anyway, um, so your your new front end does a similar thing, right? It, it, it the, the way it talks to the demon is similar, just the way we view it is not text, the way we view it is now graphics and buttons and things like that, right? Or do I have it wrong? Yeah, Since so, I haven't seen no, it. No, no, no. That's that's right. No, the it, it communicates with the demon in the using the exact same way, actually. It cool. just effectively decodes the text differently and presents it in the UI. Um yeah, that's exactly cool. how it works. The funding for it, right? So you requested some funding. Um, and that went through the DAO. How was that experience for you? Or how did it go? Um, I didn't actually I don't think I managed to get it working at all. <laughs> ah, um, <it's> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I I had I had very little time, and I didn't have wallets linked up, and so I yes, I don't think I actually reached the finish line on that. So. I got gotcha. you. Um, we definitely had a vote on it, um, and so you may not have voted, uh, but we did get it up there, and then your project got funded um so you may not have voted on that but other people did <laughs> so yeah. um and then so and then that funding went uh to the towards the development was it just divi funding it or was there other projects also funding no, it? it's, the new it's just it's just divi um, just divi yeah cool all right so it's uh, so the oh, so there's an option for users we can still call this 
crypto made easy it's just in a different room i want to make it clear that as i've used all of these apps the desktop is easy for deployment and you know vaults and previously master nodes and and uh, the divi labs tool which is the divi wallet is obviously you know it's got its functions of easy in there this is for that person who um really is looking to have something that's very clean um very lightweight can be run on almost anything it does require a little bit more knowledge but with that little bit of knowledge in how this is set up and how it auto installs in how it auto syncs in how it also as i recall it also does a bootstrap in how it also does all these kinds of things it from its perspective is absolutely as crypto made easy as these other features this is a community built tool is just different it's for that person who wants to again deploy something that's standalone that doesn't have the graphical interface on it although it sounds like you're adding something um to it that makes that extends it from the node perspective i'm really excited i i'm just really really excited thank you cool uh i don't know i don't think i have any more questions i think uh it was think great was to talk great. to you yeah, yeah it's great to talk to you finally about this i don't think people have heard about this uh you know oh there was one more thing yeah. uh that i like about box wallet um and i know you just like the initial uh, incarnation of box wallet and i was trying to hit at what what you just said voice was um one of the things that makes it kind of interesting more than the desktop and more than the 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 um the mobile wallet is it, it's very i'm gonna say locatable so like you put it you put you started out in the pie but there's tons of machines of all different shapes and sizes that run linux and are capable mm -hmm. of running a divi unit so that means that you like it's a lot easier to use box wallet i think um to get different configurations going either very small units uh and just have this thing like running all by itself you know in some you know some shelf somewhere and not your main use but like you could run it you know you can put them i, I know in devices i, I like Three years ago, I built a stupid thing with a, a very small, it wasn't a pie, it was a different one. And it was before Box Wallet was ready. Uh, you know, I put this little gizmo together and and I made it like chime when it got a stake and reward. And like, it was very nerdy, <laughs> you know, but, but when you're making it into something like that, and when you're making something that is able to be placed into much smaller, much lightweight, much more lightweight devices, the that might be a reason to pursue the box wallet version of stuff um because that makes it easy to deploy on that kind of system and you can do silly things with it afterward um like you know i tried to do but <laughs> I, I i stopped <laughs> but that's, anything. that's yeah that's one of the reasons that i think it's cool to have this this third option other than the desktop and the mo mobile is like it opens up the possibilities of different creative ways to use your wallet or do silly things with your wallet um, that you may not normally do because it's connected to your laptop or connected to your home computer or whatever. This opens up the the other possibilities. And, and I think, um, Richard, you kind of created a tool to uh, like hopefully inspire people to uh, try out, you know, doing their own thing with it, which you really just yeah. can't do with the, with the desktop or the mobile. Yeah, um, I think... And I I hopefully it will encourage people to play around with old machines they have lying around. Um, I pretty much know anybody that has a, a you know, an old Windows machine, for example, that's got really slow, um, and they, you know, they've got enough uh, technical expertise to install Linux on because it's not really that difficult nowadays. It, it's pretty much a wizard to to get it on there, um, and then in a very short period of time, they can be up and running and syncing the node. So. Yeah, yeah. I, you brought up a good point. I, I actually left all that out. Like, lots of people have a crappy computer lying around that they no longer use. This is a perfect place for it to try out, learn, grab some new skills, and try something new. Um, I hope it encourages people to to try that stuff out again. Um, I say again, but try that stuff out. Try it out for the first time. Yeah, yeah, for the first time. <laughs> Not just again. <laughs> um, but yeah. So now, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> 
<laughs> Richard, um, Richard how, how do how do people get a hold of you? I mean, how I think you're on Discord, but your main place of operation, you know, the time you put in volunteering to build all this stuff and everything, um, and your community and everything, they're on Telegram. Is that correct? Yes. Sorry, I, I muted myself. I was just trying to find my Telegram group. Um, yes, um, <laughs> that's that's where I am. I, I I'm all I sort of hover around on Discord as well, but it's mainly um, it's mainly the the box wallet Telegram group that uh, that the community's at. Box cool. wallet. Why don't you uh, Why don't you uh, put a plug in there for your Telegram group so people can find it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it literally is uh, box wallet just all one word um, Box all over yeah that sounds hard to find uh, <laughs> yeah the uh, i think the full the full link is uh, t.me forward slash box one perfect perfect and of course they can also ping you up on uh, on discord and i think neek built a, a a sub channel in discord that has the box wallet link so if, if anybody's in discord they don't know the telegram link um it's uh it you you can click that and then you can go directly over i believe so i stuttered cool. that out <laughs> you got it it came out uh all right richard thank right. you again thanks for, for joining, joining us, us. and thanks uh, for having it was me. great to talk to you and uh hopefully we will see more all right thanks That's so much pretty. thanks very much right. okay bye bye, bye.